Hello everyone. Today we're doing the Ethernaut challenge level one. This one's called fallback. If you haven't already, go check out the level zero video we did to know how to set up Ethernaut. And today we're gonna hack this smart contract by the name it suggests something to do with the fallback function, but let's check it out. So it says, look carefully at the contracts code below and we will beat this level if we can claim the ownership of this contract and we can reduce its balance to zero. So essentially we have this contract called fallback uh, which sets an owner variable during the constructor to message.sender. And it sets the contribution to a thousand ether for this message.sender. Um, then we have an only owner uh, modifier and then we have a few different functions so a function called contribute which can add to the contributions of whoever calls this functions and it needs to be less than 0.001 ether and if contributions of this message.sender is greater than the contributions of the owner then the owner is updated okay so we know something needs to happen over here we need to update the owner and this function seems to update the owner if the contributions are greater than the owner. However, this is a little bit tricky because the contributions of the owner are initially set to a thousand ether. Whereas in the contribute function, we can only send values less than 0.001 ether. So it will take more than a thousand transactions even if we were to do this manually to get to the point where our contribution is more than the owner. Okay, so there's something here and we have a get contribution function that just shows the contributions and then we have a withdraw function that's that can be called by the owner which transfers all of the balance out. So this is also something we need to do to reduce the balance to zero but we can only do this after we successfully become the owner. And then there's a receive function which is like a default sort of fallback function. Um, which requires message.value is greater than zero and our contribution is greater than zero, which also changes the owner. Interesting, okay. So the way the receive function works is you just send some ETH to this contract address. And then uh, since we're not explicitly calling a function when we're sending ETH, um, the receive function is automatically called. It's kind of like the default sort of catch all function. And if your smart contract doesn't have a receive function or a fallback function, then actually you cannot send ETH directly to the contract. That transaction will just fail. Okay, so let's start. Uh, I'm gonna get a new instance. So we have a contract to play around with. And let's wait for this transaction to be mined. Awesome. So we have a new instance. This is the contract address and we can check um, await contract.owner and you'll see this current owner address is not the same as my player address, right? So we need to send this contract. Um, we're gonna use this receive function to send this contract some ETH and it will update the owner to us. However, to do that, we need to meet this required condition. So message.value is greater than zero. That's okay, we'll just send it a small amount of ETH. And contributions message.sender is greater than zero. So to make this true, we need to first contribute something to the contract uh, to bump up our contribution value. And we'll just send it a small amount of ETH. So we'll just do await contract.contribute and uh, we will send it a value of um, two way and 0 0.0001. All right, so we're uh, two way by the way is a helper function that's available in the console browser and it converts an Ethereum ether amount to way. So it converts like 0.001 girly ETH into way, which is what Solidity expects. And then we click confirm and we wait for this transaction to be mined. All right, 
So the transaction has now been mined. Let's check what our contribution is at now. So we do await contract dot get contribution and we'll do the player address. And it says invalid argument hex number with leading zero digits. Interesting. Um, all right. Oh, okay. So it doesn't actually expect a parameter. So we just do, that was my bad. We just need to do get contribution. It doesn't actually take a parameter at all. And we see in this value, um, it's greater than zero, right? This is a object it's returning. I'm guessing it's some sort of like big number thing or something. Um, so we can maybe do a from way over here. Um, so from way await contract dot get contribution. Yeah, and it says 0 0.0001. So this returns us a way, it's kind of like a big number because um, it returns a UN256 and UN256 can possibly be a really large number, much more than what JavaScript can handle by itself. So instead of sending a regular number like 01234 in JavaScript, it sends this like big number object which breaks it down, which breaks it down, breaks the number down into um, sort of a different encoding. And then we can convert that into a more human readable encoding, which is this, um, which is exactly the amount of ETH we contributed earlier. All right, so now that our contributions are greater than zero, let's just send this address some ETH. So take the contract address and I'm going to copy this contract address and I'll go to MetaMask and I'll send this contract address a tiny little amount of ETH. Um, so 0 0.00001, it doesn't really matter. You can send whatever. Um, it just wants it to be greater than zero. So you just send it a tiny amount and we will wait for this transaction to be mined. Awesome, so the transaction has now been mined. So at this point, given the transaction did not fail, we should have become the owner. So let's check that. First of all, I'm gonna print out the player address and then we'll do await contract.owner once. And you see my address is the same as contract.owner now. So we've fulfilled the first requirement of this level where we've claimed ownership of the contract and now we need to reduce its balance to zero. So we can do that pretty easily now that we're the owner. We just need to call contract.withdraw and this will send us all the ETH that the contract has at this point. So wait for this transaction to be mined. Awesome, so the transaction has been mined. So you can see in this function what it's doing, it's taking the owner address and it's transferring it the balance of address this, which is the smart contract itself. So at this point, I should have received back the ETH I contributed earlier. But anyway, we should have met both the conditions now. Um, actually, what we can do is we can get the balance of the contract to make sure it's now zero. Um, oh, the Oh, it needs to be contract.address, right? So you do await get balance, contract.address, and you see it's now zero. So we've claimed ownership and we've reduced the balance of the contract to zero. Um, I'm going to go ahead and submit the instance now for verification and click confirm. And wait for this transaction to be mined. Perfect. So the transaction has been mined and Amazing, we've successfully passed this level. Uh, we've learned about the Open Zeppelin's ownable contract and how it can be used to restrict the usage of some methods to a privileged address, which is typically the only owner uh, modifier. The bug in this contract obviously is the fact that in the fallback function, it just updates the owner if this require condition is met. 
So typically, if this wasn't here, then the only way to become an owner would have been to do a lot of contributions over and over again. And since it starts out uh, with the contribution of 1,000 ETH for the owner, having to do it over and over again would take a lot of transactions, given we can only send a small amount of ETH per transaction to it. Uh, that would be painstaking. It would be possible, assuming you have a thousand testnet ETH for some reason, um, or slightly more than thousand testnet ETH for some reason, and it would be possible, but that may have been the intended way this contract is supposed to work. But the problem is, in this receive function, it has this line, assuming we meet these conditions. And we were able to exploit that to become the owner and then withdraw all its money without needing to send it a thousand ETH. Awesome. So I hope you learned something and I will see you in the next level, which is going to be Fallout.